And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. A woman with an issue of blood. I would like to say, for all you guys who've got life together, no problems at all, but there are some of us who still have issues. <laughs> I like this woman right here. For 12 years, she had issues. I, I'm, I'm doing a little play on words here, but you know what I'm talking about. Our issue may not be the same issue that she had, but regardless, she had her own personal issue. Some of us, we carry our own personal issue, but we have to find ourselves like she found herself. This woman was wrestling with the issue, an issue of blood for 12 years. She was dying on the spot. Because of their laws, because of the way things were, she wasn't even allowed to be in public or touch anything that anyone else was going to touch. Because whatever she touched became unclean. This is the way they thought. This was their life. This was their law. And so for her to be out in public where Jesus was with her issues in her life and touching him, it was against the law. She had issues. Some of us find ourselves with issues. But this is what she did. She came up behind him and touched the hem of his garment. That word hem that I just want to throw it out there, it is a fringe or a tassel. You guys who you know, graduated, you had the little tassel and you kept the little fringe thing. Or thing. Yeah, something like that. But it was a little tassel. And this is what the, uh, the Jews, they, they would do. You, you would do. Gentiles couldn't do it, you know, and, and actually only the men and ch women and children couldn't. But they wore these things. You might see them sometime in certain places. They're this white garment, you know, with the blue stripes on, and at the end it has these little tassels. And they would do this. I could read it to you better than I could tell you. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38, verse 10, it says, God was telling Moses, speak to the children of Israel, tell them to make tassels on the corner of their garments throughout their generations, and put a blue thread in the tassel of the corners, and you shall have the tassel that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that you may not follow the harlotry to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined, and that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy for your God. What are you saying? Those tassels that were on the men, that garment, that shawl, and on the corners of it, there were these little tassels. Or the hem. It would be on the border. And when they would look at those things, it will remind them of the word of God. It will remind them to keep God's commandments. They will always have something to remind them of God's holy word. Check this out. Remember that woman who had the issue? She come up behind Jesus in the crowd and she grabbed a hold of the tassel. She grabbed a hold of that which represents the word of God. She grabbed a hold of that which she knew that would bring life. See, remember that tassel for their generation. She wasn't even allowed to carry one or to have one of her own. Not to mention that she had an issue that didn't allow her to be out in the open. She had a sickness. She needed to be healed. So what did God do? Well, oh, excuse me. What did she do? She grabbed a hold of the word of God. She grabbed a hold of that tassel that represents God's commandments, God's life, God's word. And this is what I want to, if I would, encourage us today. Whatever your issue may be, I want to encourage you to grab a hold of God's word. Know what God's words say about you, not just the knowledge that I thought, but there's wisdom. The Bible says, get wisdom. And out of all you're getting, get understanding. He sent his word. 
His word came in and his word showed up on the street and it was wearing that which represented the word. You had the living word walking around with the written word. And the living word connected with the written word brought healing to this lady's body. And this is where we are. We need the living word. God's, if you would, his rhema word that's going to speak to you on a daily basis. He want to be personal. He want to tell you, baby, it's going to be all right. It don't make any difference what's going on out there. I've got you. I've got you. Now, you may not read it right here in the verbatim, but you got to know when the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you, you know, I got this because he's got me. But then you go in and say, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Maybe it is in this written word. The living word has spoken. And the written word has confirmed. The living word was walking in the streets. He was carrying the written word. And the lady that had the issue, she was like, I know how I'm going to get my life in order. I know how I'm going to get things straight. I know how, why it's going to be okay now. It's not because someone told me a bunch of knowledge. I'm not eating from that tree that would make me feel good about myself, but leave me with no power to walk it out. That's what knowledge does without the word. I can feel good about myself. I could build up an image of myself on the inside, but if I don't have the power to walk in dominion, then I'm left without, and I'm left with disappointments. But God said, but I made you to be like me, and when I made you to be like me, I gave you the power to overcome. And it's through my word. We say